Hey, we've got two word problems here, both of which are confusing, but they're, they're worth trying and thinking about because uh, we get a lot of practice here with positive and negative values. Now, the first problem does say the Big Town Bears football team are at the 25-yard line. In the next three plays, they lose an average of four yards per play. Where are the Bears after three plays? Well, uh, let's just focus on the, before we even talk about football, right? Look what they're saying. We lose an average of four yards per play. So whatever that means, we'll talk about that in a moment, we know we're going to lose four yards three times. And that's easy to model, right? We know that, that when you lose an amount, and you lose it repeating over and over again, you can re represent that with multiplication. So three times negative four could represent how much we're losing. Three times we're losing this much, and that's negative 12. So there I said something different, which is where are the bears after the, the three plays? Let's talk about football for a moment. Football, we have a field. And on both sides are the end zones. So here is, uh, this is where you score in an end zone. Or you could score on this side, depending on which way you're going. That's the leaving that out here, which does make the problem a little bit more confusing. Um, and actually gives us several answers. But the way football works is that there are 100 yards in the field. And I'm going to mark some key points here. Oops should be over a little bit. So in, in the halfway point, we call this the 50-yard line. Now, if you're starting here and running this way, you will reach 50 yards and then 75 and 100 and score, but the way we number in football, we go up to 50 and then back down to 25 and 0. The idea is that we're measuring two teams moving in opposite directions. We don't know which way the Bears are going, but let's just assume they're going this way. The Bears are going this way they're trying to score. So that means that they would start somewhere here, right? They'd catch the ball and they'd run, and eventually after a series of plays, if they make it here, right, without losing more than four downs in a row, um, they're able to score. It says they're at the 25-yard line, but they're leaving out some more. We don't know. Are they, are they here at this 25-yard line, or are they here at this 25-yard line? So let's, just, let's look at both cases figure that out and get a sense of, of why this problem has two answers. So if they're standing here, we know they're going to lose 12 yards. That's what we calculated before. So 25 minus 12 brings us to what yard line? That's the 13 yard line. So one answer could be 13. Now here, where we're subtracting 13, we're actually moving up. Just like we do on a, on a, a number line with negative numbers. Remember, with negative numbers, here's the zero line. But let's say this is negative 5. If I move back, I'm actually going up to negative 10. The absolute value of the number is increasing. So if this is where they're trying to get to, here's the 0 line now. Right? We moved 0. Before, 0 was here. So you can think of this as an increasing number chunk, which is like the right hand or positive side of the number line. This side is a negative part of the number line. Because here, as you go closer to 0, the numbers, the absolute value is going down. 50, 25, 10, and so forth. So now when we lose 12, where do we end up? It's not 13, but actually 38. I mean, I'm sorry, we're losing 12 yards on 13, so we actually, actually end up at 37. Just as if we had negative 25 minus 12, we would end up at negative 37. The absolute value increases the distance from 0. So we could have two, two answers here. Now, I could have assumed from the beginning that the bears are going the other way, but you might notice that we still get the same two answers. That's an interesting question. Up next, we've got this one. A new convenience store wants to attract customers for a one-day special. They sell gasoline at 25 cents below their cost. They sell 5,750 gallons a day. How much money do they lose? Well, how do we model this? Well, for 5,750 gallons, each gallon, we lose 25 cents. So I can model that by saying 5,000. 750 times negative 0.25. Now this problem isn't super easy to deal with, but we can we can work it out. I'm going to first say, oh, well, negative 0.25, that's the same thing as negative one-fourth. They're both a quarter. And then I'm going to rewrite this as 5,750 times negative one-fourth. I like doing this because it reminds me that if you want to find one-fourth of something, positive or negative, you divide by four. Right? For example, if I said, what is one-fourth of two? Well, then you would say 0.5, because five goes into two four times, or two divided by four is, is 0.5. So really, you divide by four to, 
solve this problem. 5,750. I'm going to divide by, of course, negative 4 because we have negative 1 fourth. So I'm going to forget, I'm going to think about this in terms of a positive number just for a little bit. Because I know that eventually my answer will resemble 5,750, except it'll have a negative value. So I'll put the negative sign way out of room up here. How do I figure this out? Well, I play with the numbers. I start estimating, right? 4 goes into this much, the 5,750, at least a thousand times. So 4 times a thousand is 4,000. Hmm. I'm trying to find the number that I multiply by 4 to get this big number. I'm almost there, but I still have 1,750 to go. So what about 4 times 500? That's too big, right? That's give us another 2,000. So what about 4 times um, 250? That gives us another 1,000. And I keep going here. I want to get 5,750. Well, what about 4 times, well, how, do I, how do I get to 750 using 4? I, I can't really, uh, 4 times 200 would give me 800. That's a little bit too big. I've already got 5,000. Um, so let's try 4 times times 700. What's that? Well, 4 times 700, excuse me, what am I saying? That's too big too. Uh, going back, 4 times 100 would give me 400, right? But and 4 times 200 gives me 800. Let's try 4 times 150. What does this give us? Well, that gives us 600. And we're almost there. We still have to go 150 more. So 4 times 25 gives me 100. And I still got um, 50 to go. 4 times 12 gives us 48. And we're almost there. So we know that 4 goes. 4 goes into 5,750, 1,250 times at least, plus this right here. We have 4 times 150, which was 600, and we have 4 times 12, which is 48, 4 times 25, which is 100. Piece these together to get our answer. That's 700. This is 5,000. Oh, 5, oh boy, I'm sorry. Let me go back. The answer, actually, of course, is, is the sum of these numbers plus the fractional part we have to add in, add in last. So let's add those numbers. We get 1,250, and then 1,400, 1,425, 1,437, 1,437. However, um, if you notice what these numbers add up to, and that's what I, was, I think I was getting at, these don't quite add up to... 5,750. This adds to 5,748. So what do we do? Well, 4 goes into the two remaining pieces left a half of the time. So the answer is 1, negative 1,437 and a half. Whew. Sorry about that. And sorry about the clumsy way I was doing that. I mean, you, you could have lined these numbers up and probably they arrived at it faster. I just like to break the numbers apart and think about what's happening. All I did was divide 5,750 by 4 Right? And I did that by finding out what do I have to multiply 4 by to get 5,750. And I found that out by piecing it together slowly. All right. Hope that didn't uh, get you too frustrated there. Thanks.